Blink, blink, ding, bling. Ding, 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 Welcome to Hoya Podcast, Amy, mm. Jackie, listeners. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Here we are. Here we are. Another week. Yes. We just recorded yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we might not be as peppy <laughs> as you would expect. <laughs> because we're very peppy. All right. <laughs> Last ep- last episode was a real good episode, mm-hmm. Chasing Bobby. That was a classic. Mm-hmm. This episode is kind of another one. Yeah, it really is. And it's almost kind of like a a little bit of a love note to Texas. Definitely. Uh, even though Hank is so horribly mistreated. Oh my God. <laughs> I know it's unreal. It's unreal. But today we're talking about Yankee Hanky. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Good old Yankee hanky. Uh, Yeah, so I just watched this episode in preparation, and I was like, man, this is a really good one. There's, again, so many layers to it, so many things. I mean, you think it just starts out with Hank being upset that he was born in New York, but no, there's there's a whole assassination plot two two times that happens in this. Yeah, yeah, and it is interesting. It's all over the place. Um, there's a lot of betrayal and there are a lot of assassination attempts. <laughs> At least two. Yeah. And maybe even three, if you count bringing Tilly to New York while she was fucking nine and a half months pregnant. Yeah. There's got to be a lot we're not even aware of. <laughs> <laughs> so. oh, it, uh, yeah. yeah. And Hank. At the, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. We'll oh, were it. you talking about Castro? I, no, I'm talking about Hank when he falls into the water. But yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, you see, were, I was talking about okay. Tilly. Oh, and the two Castros, Tilly, and then Hank, and then Hank. So we got four already, right off the, right off the jump. Cotton is out of control. Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, Amy, anything to report from this past week since I saw you <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> everything good? Uh, yeah, everything's good. I, I do feel like I had things to say, but mm, of course now I can't remember. You can bring them up anytime. Yeah, I probably will. Okay. Might be a little tangenty. Well, okay. It is 9 p.m., so, <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> but we'll see. We will see. Whoops. Okay. Hey, speaking of tangents, mm. uh, I saw in the news today, I was telling Amy about oh, yes. a train. In the last episode, a train crashes into Hank's dearly loved old truck. Mm-hmm. And I saw, would you believe it, on the news this morning when I was watching uh, CBS Mornings with Gail King, who I love. <laughs> Our queen. Our queen. Um, we agreed that, you know, we're not, we don't want to compare Gail and Oprah. But, but Gail's better. Everyone makes a big deal about Oprah. But you know what? And Amy, you said the smartest thing. You said, you know what? Gail has friends. Oprah has gardens. <laughs> I don't even remember saying that. I thought about that all day. (laughs) And I couldn't agree more. (laughs) Anyway, I was watching Gail's morning show and one of those little tiny airplanes had to make an emergency landing. And I guess it just landed on a train track. Like a real airplane, not like a tiny toy airplane, like a a single person airplane that you would like, I'm going to dick around and fly around the you know, coastline. Yeah, like John Travolta. Right, exactly. Or Patrick Swayze. Really? Oh, yeah. He definitely crashed a plane when he was drunk. <laughs> Patrick Swayze did? Fuck yeah, he did. That's why he has pancreatic... That's why he had pancreatic cancer from his wild alcoholism. I oh hope I'm God. right. I hope I'm right. I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty right because I know Patrick Swayze. I know you know him. <laughs> well, you know what? It sounds like Patrick Swayze. It did. He was it is. so crazy. Yeah, no, he definitely crashed his plane. Well, I think that's cool. Uh, as long as <laughs> nobody was hurt. <laughs> nobody died. He seemed like a lovely person otherwise. I know. Hey. Hey. I don't blame him. Well, anyway, a plane crashed on these tracks, 
And the man inside of it was injured and EMTs had to come and pull him out of the train and they put the plane. It's and so similar. They pulled him out and within seconds, the train hit the plane. They I mean, barely, barely got him out. seconds, barely even seconds. Yeah. That video was wild. Yeah. He was so close and the train just plowed right through it. It looked like it was hitting a paper, uh, cardboard box. It, it looked like. It looked like one of those planes that you would just glue together with like Elmer's glue. Yeah, like a hobby. Right. It was crazy. Anyway, there's my tangent. Right. Well, I'm going to go off of that one. And I told Jackie, I said, you know, the uh, a couple of months ago, I was driving to Harris Teeter. Harry Th- Teet. That's a grocery store. And it's very expensive, but som- it's very close to my house. So sometimes I just bite the bullet and go. Anyway, there's a train track that runs uh, in my way to get there. So I had to stop. So there was somebody who was like really disoriented and they were kind of swaying in and out of the railroad tracks and getting really, really close to them. And we had all stopped because the, you know, bars came down like a train is coming. Mm -hmm. Right. But they were still going in and out of the tracks right in front of all of us. Oh my God. And, and I cannot tell you the terror that I felt for this person. I was like, please, please don't, don't let me watch somebody no. get explode into a million pieces. You can't ignore that. It's going to get all over your car. Trying to buy boar's head turkey. Like, I can't do this. Not I'll never be able it. to eat turkey again. Not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> what about my turkey needs? <laughs> but you can't eat turkey It anymore? came so close to hitting them. And, like, they could have just put a finger out and the train would have been touching them. Did they look surprised? Not at all. Well, unfazed. I literally screamed. And then I was like, oh, thank God, once the train passed, because a train's not stopping for shit. It won't. It didn't even slow down at all when it hit that plane. It was just like, beep, beep. (laughs) Yeah, it might have gone faster. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to grip it and rip it. Powerful. (laughs) It absorbed the power of the plane and got stronger. Exactly. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, like Gryffindor's sword. That's right. It enoleum bubes. <laughs> it bubes. <laughs> whatever Hermione it, said. Whatever it destroys, it Im- imbibes that imbibes power. Imbibes or imbubes it. <laughs> it imbubes its power. <laughs> it gets stronger. All right, Jackie, you want to do your shout out? Okay. I have a shout out this week from the voicemail. and. It's another one that I haven't listened to. I try to skim over the Mm -hmm. uh, Google transcription, the transcription that Google gives me, which is usually very wild and nonsensical, but it kind of gives you an idea of what could be in the uh, voicemail. Mm -hmm. And I saw the word poop several times in this one. So (laughs) I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. (laughs) Might as well. So this is from the voicemail. This is from December 23rd, 2021. Ooh. And here it is. Hey, Amy and Jackie, this is Robin. Um, I just listened to the Veterans Day one where you guys talk about the bathroom attendee and how disrespectful it is that the chef didn't wash his hands, which gave me a flashback to when I was like 18, 19, got blackout drunk, ended up at this little place called Tommy's in the next town over. And my friend and I were like, we're going to throw up. We need to go. <laughs> so we ran to the bathroom. Women's room was blocked. Pretty sure there's some lady in there smoking crack. I don't know. She's screaming about ghosts. So ghosts. we got to walk into the men's room. And as we're walking in, mm. in, the chef comes walking out and he goes, ladies? We're like, okay. We take two steps in. Look at the toilet. There is poop everywhere. Like, the only place that didn't have poop was where we were standing. And it was the puck. And we had already ordered. So we just had to eat poop food. No, you didn't. And I will never forget that. I, thank you for giving me flashbacks. Love your... Love our what? Because <laughs> your phone went off. Oh, wait. <laughs> but that's okay. Two seconds left. Podcast. There. <laughs> you definitely did not have to eat that, but you were 18, 19, and sometimes 
it's hard to say like I refuse your shit sandwich. <laughs> well, a couple things. We don't know for sure that that was his poop. Right? That would be alarming, but anyone who could use that bathroom and not be phased by it and not be like maybe you shouldn't go in there warning someone that tells a lot about their character. Who knows? <laughs> and and also maybe it, you know there's probably a little bit of poop in everything you're eating, so <laughs> not visibly though. <laughs> You don't have a visual representation of what's going into your sandwich. <laughs> that's true. Well, thank you for that voicemail. That was wonderful. Thank you. And that's crazy. And if you want to leave your own voicemail, you can call us at 386-530-3876. So angry. Ding! Ding! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering, Jackie, for my shout out, are you, oh, I'm sorry, are you done with I am. Okay. I'm wondering if we are doing a shout out for the same person because this person's name is also Robin. Although I assume that there's multiple Robins, right? Oh, but that's exciting. I know. A coincidence at the very least. So a while back, a long while back, uh, Robin sent us a message on Instagram and said, you know, I started drawing and I would love to send you some of the King of the Hill things that I've done before. And, uh, I'll even frame them and like send them to you. I said, yeah, please do. So we got them and they're so cute. They're so good. And I'm going to read the When little, did we get them? Uh, I can't even tell you. It was at least two months ago. Oh my God. I know. I'm only hearing about it just literally now. just now. <laughs> I have, I have been such a dickhead about this. No, I'm so, well, I'm sorry to Robin. Oh, not you. I'm sorry to Robin. <laughs> no, we forgive you. <laughs> that, I haven't, that I haven't shown you these yet. Okay. So Robin says, <gasps> okay, Amy and Jackie, sorry, this took forever to get to you guys. <laughs> and here we are just like, <laughs> it's been months. <laughs> Robin, get it together. Oh, but I have a goldfish brain. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, Robin. Say, love the podcast. Pick. Love the podcast and all the cackling with a hint of poop talk. <laughs> this this has <laughs> got to be, be the same Robin. It's got to be. What are the odds? Keep up the amazing work. Much love. Robin K. Uh, and then it says in parentheses, Jawbreaker, which I tried to find you on our Instagram, but maybe you changed your Instagram name because this was months ago. Oh, wow. And then it says, oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Robin. So, oh, and look, they even drew the the postcard. So, okay. Oh, okay, so, so the our post- card is a uh, beautiful windmill in the style of, like, uh, Holland. Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's so many different like, kinds of it windmills. It almost looks like stained glass. W- with uh, the backdrop is stained glass. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And a little flower box. The detail. Do you see it? I bet they're tulips. Oh. Yep. That would make sense. Oh, Thank you, Robin. But wait, there's more. Okay. Okay. So, first one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bobby with the egg in his ah! face. Isn't it so cute? Wow. <laughs> it's so good. When Bobby tries to throw the egg, and it just smashes into his oh. face. It's framed in everything, y'all. It's so sweet. Oh, it's I know. And then we have two of the same, essentially. I think one's for you, one's for me. Oh, so fair. And it's Ladybird oh. dressed up like him. Oh. On his lawnmower. Oh my god, that's too much. Isn't it I- precious? Oh my god, even the even the cloud. It's got to be a print. Yeah, the glasses. The oh, glasses. it's so beautiful. The little cloud. This is amazing, Robin. Thank you so, so much. Beautiful. And I, I truly am sorry that I have not shown this to her. And the frames earlier. are beautiful too. I Thank know. you so much. Oh, perfect. What medium is this? I don't. Who? That's a great question, Robin. I'm trying to figure it out because it's done beautifully. I know. It, I don't think it's acrylic. I almost thought oil pastels. I don't know, but you, you did an amazing job. Robin, please um, message us on Instagram so we can tag you in these pictures when we do post them, okay? Please. Very sorry this took so long. What a shout out. I know. Amazing. Wow. Wow. I know. Framed in everything. So nice. So thoughtful. So thoughtful and kind. 
Which one are you? Oh, you can have this one. No, no. I was just joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I was kidding. But then who's going to get the Bobby with the A? We'll put that up in our studio. Okay, sure. We'll keep it here for now. How we'll about keep that? it here for yeah. now and then we'll put it up in our <laughs> That's what we do is I take everything and I say, I'm keeping it until we get a, a studio. studio and we never get a studio. I always faltered. I'm just like, that that's, sounds, that sounds that's fair. a good idea that, that I hang it up on my fair. wall. <laughs> oh, all right. So shout outs done. huh? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful shout outs. I'm so, so glad I remembered that. <laughs> I know. I don't want to accidentally sit on them. So I'm going to move them over here. Good point. Good point. All right. So I guess we're ready to get into the episode. I think we are. Okay. Air date. February 4th, 2001. It's season five, episode 10, Yankee Hanky. <laughs> so we see the guys all admiring one of their license plates. I think who, oh, I completely forgot who got the first. Dale. Dale got a, um, yeah. a license plate and it's extra special because it says, you know, native Texan on it. And Hank's like, that's cool. Born and bred. I got to get that being a native Texan Mm. myself. Mm. I could not be prouder of being a native Texan. So he's like, all right, I'll fill out the paperwork, get my native Texan license plate. All I need are just some for to fill out some forms and I need my birth certificate, but he can't find it. And he realizes that he doesn't have it. So he calls up his mom and they're chit-chatting, and he's like, by the way, um, do you have my birth certificate? And she's like, what? Nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just super suspicious, and then she hangs up on him. Yeah. Shocking. Imagine not having your birth certificate at 41, 42 years old. Do you know where yours is? Yeah, I had to like actually order it off of the New Hampshire website Whoa. so I could get a passport. Wow. Yeah. I know I have mine somewhere. I would love to see your birth certificate. We could compare. Okay. Size. Do you think they're very different? I just want to see how big you were. Okay. (laughs) And what time you were born. Okay. (laughs) I'd be curious to know that as well. (laughs) All right. It's a date. (laughs) Um, So suspicious. Confusing. Mm Mm-hmm. Hank doesn't understand this behavior from his mom. So he calls up his dad, Cotton, and asks him, you know, can I get a copy of that birth certificate? And Cotton is just like, what? No, what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Who? (laughs) (laughs) And he seems really anxious about this. Um, So Hank is just like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Peggy even throws out the idea that they're acting weird. Because you're probably adapted. <laughs> <laughs> Another peg right off of the last one with Peggy being like, I figured it out. Yep. You're adopted. Yep. <laughs> and Hank's just like, no, I can't be adopted. My dad hates adopted children. <laughs> just the fucking worst. Of course, of course he, he would. does. That asshole. My dad hates adopted children. <laughs> but he still needs to get a copy of his birth certificate for his license plate. And now... He's trying to figure out, like, what's going on? Uh, Dale is able to look it up online. Oh, yeah. He gets some of his personal information. His social. I'm surprised that Dale doesn't already have Hank's social security number. And all of his fingerprints and all that. Exactly. A Hank mask. Yeah. He uses. Samples. Tissue samples. All all kinds. Stool. Semen. Oh, yeah. All you can eat. Yeah. (laughs) Luckily, he doesn't need all of that. (laughs) But he does, he is able to look up Hank's uh, birth certificate on the internet. It is 2001 after all. That's right. And Hank is able to see it. And clear as day, it says that he was born in New York City. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) That's right. New York, New York. York. Lights. (laughs) Times Square. (laughs) Delis. Hot dogs. (laughs) Coney Island. (laughs) The M&M store. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And Hank is horrified. So not only does he not get to identify as a native Texan, but even worse, he 
I guess, is forced to identify as a native New Yorker. I know. The only thing worse would have been California or Canada. Oh, my God. If he was not even born in America. Uh, Forget it. (laughs) He would have jumped off a bridge. He would have. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he would have. So he can't believe it. He's so freaked out. How could this have happened? What were my parents thinking, giving birth to me in New York? I'm a New Yorker. This is insane. So he goes to confront his dad about it. And he's he's just like, I, kn- I, like, I know the truth. Tell me. Stop. Stop the lies. Tell me. Tell mm-hmm. me what is going on. And Cotton tells him, well, you know, I didn't want to tell you because I wanted to protect you. <gasps> Uh, but you know, it was back in what, 1957. Yeah. Yeah. I and think he was born in 58, right? Yeah. Maybe it was 58 then yeah. whatever year he was born. Uh, he was caught and tell some story about how, you know, you were almost due and Tilly heard about New York city from, uh, the girls at what the hair shop <laughs> at, the hair, at the hair salon. At the hair salon. She heard about New York City and wanted to go. And I wanted to take her there as kind of one last hurrah. And we were, of course, having a lovely trip. Right. And I took her to all of the finest places. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was, uh, I like what he says. He was like, he's like, I took her to the Rainbow Room. It was so expensive and nice. And we were dancing. I don't know. Maybe it was, uh, maybe I dipped her too hard or uh, maybe old Blue Eyes, uh, Grease the tracks. Grease the tracks. <laughs> Maybe old Frankie Blue Eyes grease the, the tracks. tracks. Which is an amazing, amazing thing that they got in. That was shocking. That is, that is alarming. Right, yeah. yeah. But it was so good. It's so vulgar. <laughs> it's such old Frankie Blue Eyes grease, grease the, the tracks. Track. <laughs> I'm going to start saying that when I'm turned on. I'm like, you're really greasing my tracks. Yeah. <laughs> These tracks. Are greased. They are ready for your train. <laughs> I wish I knew who wrote that line. I know. That's brilliant. It's and you're so right. Good. I can't believe they just like got, they, they, like it's a joke about her getting wet. It's like alarmingly wet where a baby just shoots out of Slips her. Slips out, yeah. Well, <laughs> while they're having this wonderful trip, she ends up going into labor early. And hmm. it was, you know, what could they do? They had to go to the hospital and Hank was born in New York city and cotton, I think promised. I promised your mother that I would never tell you mm-hmm. the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, the and, shame, yeah, the shame, the shame of it all. So now Hank knows what happened and he's pissed. So he calls up his mom and he is so rude to her. He's so <laughs> rude to Tilly. He's just like, because you're, you were so selfish and you just had to go to New York city and and Aww. just like make a whole to do. I was born in New York City. And she's like, what? What <laughs> are you talking about? I never wanted to go to New York City. And Hank's like, well, that's what dad said. So somebody here's not telling the truth. <laughs> and then a beat. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow everyone is like at home and they're, they're staring at him. at him like and Hank. <laughs> no one has to say anything. He's just like. All right. Yeah. Cotton's probably lying. <laughs> Oh, I know. I know it's dead. <laughs> so then he finds out the real, probably the much truer story from Tilly, where she didn't want to go to New York and Cotton made her go and he brought her to some baseball game and she didn't even want to go to this baseball game. And maybe it was like, hot or she said it was unseasonably warm, very unseasonably warm, warm, which apparently was an inaccuracy. Apparently on that actual day, it was quite cold. Oh, I came across. Oh, (laughs) Um, oh. okay. I'm so interested to hear what you have to say about that. That's it. Oh, (laughs) it was cold that day, (laughs) but in King of the Hill world, it was very hot and she was uncomfortable at this baseball game. Cotton was actually there for ulterior reasons. He Mm -hmm. was trying to assassinate Castro, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At this baseball game. Yep. Um, but, and Topsy's there. Topsy's And he there. looks so good. He looks amazing, right? Okay. He's super handsome. He's very, th- I thought the same thing. Cotton looks exactly the same yep. just with hair. He looks like a raisin yep. that's been stuffed on a pair of feet. Mm-hmm. And Topsy looks good. He looks like Rod Serling from The Twilight Zone. Oh. Doesn't he look just like him? 
Wow. Very like um, classically handsome. Erect. Topsy. It's a shame Just what so became of him. Oh, what be- oh God. <laughs> Can't even form a word. Like an actual windbag. <laughs> Um, so they're trying to, Topsy's there too, and they have this plan where they're going to assassinate Fidel Castro, but- With a blow dart. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what? That's, I don't know anything about assassinating people. Maybe there's <laughs> something to it. But Tilly ends up going into labor and Cotton's like, what? Not now. I'm so close to killing Fidel Castro. And she's like, nope, this baby's coming now. And I didn't even want to be here. and the best so they have to cancel their plans of assassination and the best they can do is Tilly runs to the nearest ladies room and gives birth there so nightmare so then Hank has to now come to terms <laughs> with the fact that not only was he born in New York City he was born in Yankee Stadium in the in a ladies room a public ladies room in Yankee Stadium in New York City so this is hard for him to sw- a hard pill to swallow for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While all of this stuff is going on with Hank, uh, sort of a B plot is uh, Hank confronting Cotton initially about w- where he was born. Mm-hmm. Uh, triggers a, a bunch of events with Cotton and his friends. Where I don't, I can't, I don't know exactly why. Maybe. Because it was the failed assassination attempt. Well, Tilly, like Tilly had Hank at this failed assassination attempt. And they're like, you know what? That reminds me. We never actually did that. Okay. Because the way he said it, I wasn't sure if this was like, no, we're going to wait another 70 years to, (laughs) to, you know. When we're 107. Yeah. (laughs) When this baby turns 70. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I guess it just kind of brings to mind to Cotton their failed mission. So he con he contacts uh, his friends, you mm-hmm. know, all the stinkies and Topsy and <laughs> all Ir- the stinkies. Ir- Irwin, all the fatties. Erwin Linker. Linkler. Yeah. Linkler. <laughs> and the fatties, of course. Um, <laughs> and he's just like, are we doing this? Let's do this. Yeah. Let's what go. have we got to lose? Right. And so they start kind of getting together and planning this new plan. To assassinate Fidel Castro. <laughs> um, so back to Hank. He gets the real story the with all the gory details mm-hmm. from Tilly. So now he goes back to confront Cotton again. Only this time he's like, now I really know the truth. And you can't uh, get out of it this time. And, and you're a liar. And I can't believe you. And Cotton is there with all of his friends and he is surprisingly empathetic to uh, Hank. And he's just oh, like, so sad. I'm so sorry. I didn't want you to find out the truth. And I, you know, I was ashamed. I'm and so ashamed of myself. I didn't mean to. And I just I couldn't face the, the truth of what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, you know what? And he's kind of like giving like beady little side eyes to all of his guys mm-hmm. around him. He's like, why don't you uh, hang out with us and we'll have a real Texas night with you and make you a real Texan. How about that? Right. My, oh. my son. Uh, oh. And Hank is, is like, all right. Falls hook, line and sinker immediately. Say what you want about Peggy, but I think his dad is also his Charleston Heston. <laughs> Charlton Heston. I know. <laughs> Did you know it the whole time? While yes, of course I know. His name's not Charleston. That's a dance. <laughs> God damn it, Jackie. You're such an asshole. I didn't realize until I was like, I was posting it for, <laughs> for our Patreon and for the podcast. And I was like, how do you spell Charleston? <laughs> Charleston. <laughs> Heston. Nope, his name is Charlton Heston. <laughs> the Charleston is a dance. She is diabolical. I was listening she back. She was so convincing. I was listening back to the last episode, and only then did I start to wonder. <laughs> did she believe me? I did. I <laughs> of course I did. Because well, I'm an honest person. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like I think Charleston sounds better. 
Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Continue. <laughs> so it's also a city in South Carolina. I'm pretty sure. Let's not dig ourselves any deeper. <laughs> uh, so, um, person plays Ant thing. Say what you want about Peggy. I think she l- did nail Hank. I know he was crying about his truck in the last episode, but he has such a strained and complicated relationship with his father. And yeah. ultimately, he does want his father to of say, course. I love you. Of course he does. And so him going with his dad and his friends, like actually thinking like, oh, my dad is apologetic and wants to take me out for a nice night. Like how he's not suspicious of that. I don't know, except that Peggy has a point in that (laughs) he is, his father is Charleston Heston and he is Ethan Hawke. God. So I I can't believe, I can't believe believe you do the whole time. You're so mean. I think at one point you even say, that's such a weird name. And I'm just like, sure. <laughs> you're such, you're so mean. I thought you knew. No, so- of course I didn't. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Cotton and all of his friends, all the stinkies and everyone, <laughs> they take Hank out for this quote unquote fun Texas night. Um, and they... Proceed to get poor Hank hammered. Oh, <laughs> God, I love a drunk Hank. He's he's drunk and he is so happy. He, he's the happiest he's ever been every single time he's drunk. But except for except for in the as old as the hills. But I attributed the happiness to being drunk, but also his father doing this of nice course, thing for him. Of course. And he was just so pleased to be out with his dad having a Texas night on the town. Oh, I'm going to cry. Yeah. I'm going to cry. Um, they're heading to San Antonio to pick up um, a friend of theirs, uh, unbeknownst to Hank. It's somebody who's half Mexican and half Cuban, and they're going to help them somehow. They're the, going to use the half Cuban The Cuban part. half of him right. is going to help them. <laughs> what was his name? Uh, Lopez. Yeah. Lopez. So they're heading down there and they get to the Alamo and they prop Hank up in front of the gates to the Alamo. And Hank's kind of drunk and stumbly. And he's like, Dad, would you want to take a picture with me? And Cotton's like, no, you know what? Uh, I'll take the picture and you stand there and hold this newspaper and also this gun, (laughs) placing him at the Alamo on a specific date holding a weapon i still don't fully understand i don't fully i don't get it but i don't fully understand it either i'm just trying to i'm hoping that as i say the random details they make sense to someone it doesn't (laughs) okay good i'm glad i'm not the only one it doesn't at all uh yeah it looks like whatever they're doing it's diabolical it involves murdering someone um somebody very powerful Mm. and trying to pin that on hank which is so awful. It's, I mean, you're guaranteed for how powerful this person is. If you succeeded, Hank and his family would be murdered. A hundred and ten percent. He would be lucky if he just went to prison. Oh, yeah. Like there's your dream vacation. Otherwise, you would be murdered, and then somebody in prison would murder him. You would think Cotton would think at least about Bobby, because Bobby would for sure get murdered. It would be, you know, oh, he's so easy, such an easy target. Yeah, he and Peggy. Yeah, they'd be murdered first, and then they'd make Hank look, and then they would murder Hank. (laughs) That's how brutal it would be. This is what Cotton wants. Yes, eaten by rats. Awful. So poor Hank still hasn't caught on at this point. He's drunk in front of the Alamo, holding this newspaper and this gun. And then about the time he starts to catch on, I think, Cotton's just like, yeah, no, we're doing this thing, and we're going to pin it on you, and we needed your truck. Oh, by this point, he's tied Hank's uh, wrists up. Sweet, precious Hank. He's like, oh, you got me the lasso I wanted when I was like nine. He's so, he's so starved for love. Poor baby. He's so traumatized. Yeah. And he just wanted a lasso. Instead of giving him this lasso that he's been wanting. He hog ties uh, him. He hog ties him. (laughs) And they take his clothes and they throw him over the fence to the Alamo. Why did they take his clothes? I don't know. What was the point? I don't really understand. It was just to humiliate him. 
I mean, this is so evil. It's so fucked up. Cotton is, and people are like, I love cotton. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Peggy's the worst. She's so mean. Okay. Peggy would literally beat the shit out of Cotton if she was there and she saw that shit happen. She'd stomp him right in his nonies. With his, with her big ass 16 and a half. <sighs> he's so cruel. Cruel. And is he, is this part of why he's so cruel to Hank? Because that holds some meaning, him being born in New York? Maybe. I don't know. I, I think it's just. He's so mean. He's just a not great person. Yeah, truly. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is just above and beyond. Because he was very cruel to Tilly. Yeah. Extremely. So. Thank God she had her miniatures. <laughs> she would have lost her mind, poor oh, thing. Oh, those tiny seals. Yeah. Little precious, precious unicorns. <laughs> Just keeping her company. Yeah. When she was at her lowest. Right. Oh, Cotton is awful. And he, they bail on Hank. They leave him uh, hammered, tied up, and just in his underwear at the Alamo. In they, his they underwear. take his truck, right, too? Absolutely, they take his truck. Yeah. So he uh, runs inside of the Alamo. Thank goodness it's unlocked. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, how the fuck did he just walked in? Thank goodness. <laughs> so he just walks into the Alamo and this is maybe his lowest point in the episode, you yeah, know? Yeah, poor baby. He He's hogtied. He finds out, finds out this horrible thing about being born in New York City and then he gets like a little glimmer of hope. And some like desperately wanted love from his dad. And his dad's like, we'll make you a Texan. And the validation of that, that's promised to him. And now he, <laughs> what his dad was just like, ha, you loser, <laughs> bailed on him, uh, tried to pin an assassination attempt on him. Yes. Basically tried to get him and his entire family murdered and left him just in his underwear tied up at the Alamo is so, so he's like inside the Alamo, it's dark. And he's just kind of like, you could feel all of this wash over him. I am literally heartbroken right now. Like I feel pain inside of my body. This is one of the episodes where I really just felt like I wanted to just cradle him. Oh God. This poor, poor, all he wanted was a native Texan license plate. (laughs) Oh, and his dad's love. And he got neither. Oh, he got the opposite of bold. (laughs) He got the, worst of it all. Not only were you not born in Texas, you were born in New York. And you got an I Heart New York bumper sticker. And not only- Courtesy of Dale. (laughs) Courtesy of Dale. And not only do I not love you, I hate you. Oh! Oh my god. So Hank is alone in the Alamo and all of this is washing over him and it's sinking in and he starts to kind of walk around and he sees, you know, the history of the Alamo and he sees this one section that had all of these different state flags and they were flags representing people from all over that died at the Alamo. And Mm -hmm. um, I feel like all of this is kind of making him think like, Oh, people come from all over the place, but you know, I guess basically it's what's in your heart or the spirit of whatever. Well, there's New York. New York is right there, you know, represented as one of the flags. And he's like, well now, I'm taking that. That's right. Not Oklahoma. Not Oklahoma. Or Montana. Or Montana. I thought Oklahoma too. Yeah. Who's from Oklahoma? No one. No, there was somebody I was. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, forget it. But I also thought. So funny. I thought Oklahoma too. Oklahoma came up recently. It's from somewhere. Oklahoma car wash. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. That's the one. I was just doing an Oklahoma car wash yesterday. That's what you were thinking. (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> no flag from Montana, <laughs> but there is a flag from New York. Although Peggy does note that Montana wasn't a state yet. That's right. So, fair enough. Fair enough. Either way, New York was there. And you know what? New Yorkers died at the Alamo. Mm-hmm. And I guess that doesn't make them any less Texan or whatever. Uh, protecting Texas. That's right. Protecting Texas. So, Hank kind of is. He, he, this kind of helps him pull out of his funk a little bit. And he's like, all right, you know what? I got to get some clothes. I got to get out of (laughs) here. Right. I got to unhog tie myself. That's right. Uh, So he unties himself. He looks over and he sees a statue of 
Davy Crockett, <laughs> and he puts on the outfit. It fits him perfectly. He even puts the hat on. Yeah. And he looks gorgeous. He but looks amazing. He walks out of the alimony. He's just like, why am I wearing the hat? <laughs> So he Such takes it a off. Good joke in the whole. I episode. know because you look incredible. Hey? I wish he kept it on. That would have been so amazing. funny. Amazing, you look very attractive. Very good in this whole outfit. Yes. So he uh, he's out of the Alamo. He's untied and he's dressed like Davy Crockett. And now he's gonna go. He's got to stop this assassination. I don't know, to That's right. <laughs> now he's got to go. He's got to go. He's leaving. <laughs> he's leaving this and he's crummy town. On his way. <laughs> I'm leaving this crummy town, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He has to go stop this assassination <laughs> attempt. So he uh, tracks down um, Cotton and his friends, no doubt with the help of Davy Crockett's outfit Mm. because he had good tracking skills right absolutely he killed that raccoon that was on his head with the help of this outfit so hank tracks them down and he confronts cotton and the guys Mm -hmm. and um they're getting ready to boat to they're getting ready to boat to cuba (laughs) and he jumps in the boat and he's like i'm gonna stop this this is done this is over Mm -hmm. And these guys are a little stealthier than I give them credit for because Hank is trying to get control of the situation. But what he uh, is not, he's like not noticing that the guys are kind of signaling to each other, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. you know, I communication, like, right. Like you can do that and I'll do this. Okay. Blink, 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 blink. 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 Yeah. And that means looky, looky, take them out and right. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, so they snap into action before he even realizes what's going on. Uh, The guy with the oxygen tank pulls like the oxygen cord and it trips Hank and he goes into the water. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then uh, you reminded me, Cotton said something like the, the oxygen tank. Oh, that's right. The oxygen tank like hits him in the head. That's right. And knocks him out in the water. In the Terrifying. water. Terrifying. So he's drowning and unconscious. Mm-hmm. And Cotton's like, take care of him. Uh, possibly meaning help him. Right. Yeah. Maybe. But what happens is one of the guys, probably one of the stinkies, just starts shooting into the water. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, Hank has got to be dead at this point. Right. <laughs> and Cotton's like, no, not like that. Uh, and they're trying to figure out, you know, where's Hank? Uh, cause he still hasn't come up yet. He's probably been shot a bunch and he's <laughs> unconscious, but maybe the bullets, the gun was a blessing because maybe it woke him up because he's finally awake and sneaky, sneaky little snake mm-hmm. that he is while he's under the boat. He takes out the spark plugs mm-hmm. and now the boat's not going to work uh, because that's what makes boats, boats go. It's part of it. It's part of it. The spark plugs. Spark plugs. So Hank comes back up and he's just like, surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> motherfucker. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> you thought I was dead. I'm alive. Your boat's not going to work. I've got the spark plugs. Give it up. All right. Enough's enough. Yeah. You have traumatized me my whole life. Mm-hmm. You tried to frame me for murder. You left me tied up at the Alamo without my clothes. Oh, God. And then you pushed me into the water and shot at me. Oh, my God. And knocked me out with an oxygen tank. Yep. So many things. So many things went horribly wrong. Game's over now. I have control of the situation. (laughs) I finally have control. (laughs) Your boat's not going to go anywhere. Give up. And Cotton's like, we don't care. We'll row to Cuba or we'll swim. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And uh, because we're so committed to killing Fidel Castro. And one of the guys is just like, well, I have a doctor's appointment (laughs) tomorrow. And another one's like, I have adult onset diabetes. And there's just things are a little bit more complicated nowadays. You know, you can't just pick up and go to Cuba (laughs) on a dime. You just, I mean, on a tiny little boat. Yeah. On a whim, on With, a hope and a dream. Without shins. On a wish. Or oxygen. <laughs> yeah. Take me to Cuba so I can kill Fidel Castro. Get over it. Nobody cares about that guy anymore. Oh. So, uh, 
everyone's kind of like, yeah, we're, I don't think we have time to row to Cuba from Texas. <laughs> so I I've thought about it. I don't know Cotton is, is fighting it. He's like, I don't care. I'll go there myself and I'll dress up as a lady and I'll pretend to be his maid and I'll take him out when he least expects it. And uh, basically everyone is just like, this is let it go. It's not happening. Yeah. Um, and Cotton looks disappointed. Poor mm. Cotton. Oh, But I wanted to kill him. Yeah. What would we be? <sighs> so Hank calls everyone's uh, families or Guardian. Guardian. <laughs> guardians <laughs> to come get their dads. <laughs> and oh. one of them, their daughter, comes to pick him up and he calls her a gutter slut. A gutter slut. Get your hands off me, you gutter slut. And she just goes, oh, dad. <laughs> It's not the first time that he's called her that, clearly. <laughs> she just, she, I, I, but I, I love that scene because he's like, you see the, the multiple trucks with everybody's guardian slash, sip, like, uh, child, uh, caretaker, like, coming to pick up all these guys. And the one who calls his daughter a gutter slut, if you watch it, he's like trying to get into the truck. And his foot just keeps like he can't get his foot up, Aww. which is very realistic. And she and she tries to help him up, like, "Come on, Dad, I got you." And he's like, "Get your hands off me, you gutter slut!" Yeah, and she's just like, "Dad, yeah." <laughs> Kills me. So I was time. I was thinking each of these people is their own cotton because what a nightmare. Absolutely. Ugh. But at least this woman is just like, oh, classic dad. She's clearly used to it. She's like, oh, God. I'm not going to take this personally. Okay? He's an idiot. It's fine. <laughs> I think you've been punished enough not killing Fidel Castro. <laughs> and you can't get up into a truck. It's fine. That's right. Uh, so Cotton is thwarted, I guess. But mm. we don't ever really get a proper telling off. I, I feel like no. Hank consoles him. He consoles him. There's no, there's no moment of remorse on Cotton's part or, or anything like that. Although I guess really the episode ultimately isn't about that. Even mm, though mm -hmm. Hank being born in New York doesn't seem as big of a deal as his father, you know, uh, kidnapping him uh -huh. and stealing his car and right. trying to frame him and all that stuff. Uh, but the bigger focus thing is Hank coming to terms with being born in New York and he's talking to Peggy and, um, hmm. she's saying, you know, when you went under that boat, technically you were probably dead. And so when you came back up, it's like you were born again. So, mm -hmm. so we could, you know, say that you were born in Texas and now you're a virgin again. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. And we can plow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Hank is just like, well, you know, that's a nice sentiment and all, but I, I'm not really that concerned about being a native Texan. Um, I may not be a native Texan, but I am a Texan. And he sure is. He sure is. And he should be proud. And he, I was going to say he represents the state well, but I, I don't know how true that is on a lot of different levels, but <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But uh, it, it was just really nice to hear him say that and to be able to still feel like a Texan. And Peggy says, hmm. well, yes, and I'm a Texan, too. And <laughs> Hank says something like, well, I didn't see the Montana flag at <laughs> the Alamo. And she's like, well, it wasn't a state anyway. And he's like, fine, fine, fine. Everyone's. Um, a Texan. If you had a layover in Dallas, you're a Texan. Um, <laughs> so that means I'm a Texan. What about you? Definitely. I, I stayed in Austin. <laughs> I stayed in the Dallas airport. <laughs> That's right. A horrible, horrible amount Nightmare. of time. Yeah, it was a bad time. I am a Texan. So Spirit, thank you for at least giving her that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that is about that. Excellent retelling. Will you give me your favorite parts? I absolutely will. All right. So I have quite a lot that I wrote down. Okay. Because this episode is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's so good. All right. So I'm going to start off at the very top. 
I mentioned this earlier, but like, how did Hank not need his birth certificate his entire life? How's he gone this long? Yeah. How? How? That it's not possible. You have to get it. You have to. You have to have like your birth certificate to get a job. Birth certificate for a job? Yeah. You either have to have like your passport. Like that's the first. Like oh, you don't need anything else. You got your passport, no problem. Or you go into the B and the C columns. Which are like, you need one from each. So it's like a driver's license and your birth certificate to prove who you are. Huh. But to get a passport, you have to have your birth certificate. So I just, I can see Hank not having a passport. Oh, yeah. T- to be fair. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Hank was so ready to accept that he was adopted. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like, well... I hate cotton. <laughs> I think I think that's Maybe what he, he Tom was, Landry's my dad. He was hoping so dearly that Cotton wasn't his actual dad. Yeah. <laughs> for a minute there. <laughs> he was ready. But I love when he's he's saying Hank. <laughs> like testing the name out in his mouth. Hank. Hmm. And he says, like, what if what if my name's not Hank? And what if my name is whatever? And then he goes Henry. Henry he goes, God, Peggy, what if I'm a Chris? A Chris. <laughs> what a thing to worry about. I know. But I can't really imagine a worse name for Hank. He, except for Josh. (laughs) Those two (laughs) names would destroy Hank. Josh or like, um, ooh, I bet there's a good, Chris is pretty messed up. Uh, (laughs) Josh is no better. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to really Weldon? Weldon, maybe, but it has weld in it. Like, I. He could go by that because I was thinking true. like, oh, what about like, you know, Chad? And even that's not a good name, but it's not as like Josh or Chrissy. <laughs> sorry, to any, <laughs> sorry to any Josh or Chris who listens to us. <laughs> I just, it's just not that Hank is not a Josh or a Chris. No, he's it Hank. Is really bad. Yeah, yeah. That's not Hank or Justin. Justin, that's a good one too. Ugh. That's a really good one for him. <laughs> okay, and then I put a bunch of trivia. Let's see. When Hank realized that he wasn't adopted, he was just like, oh. mm-hmm. "Well, that's a that's a relief. At least I can keep loving my mom." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like he wouldn't love her I anyway. I would also be allowed just to love her anymore, but also just my mom, <laughs> not Cotton. <laughs> That's true. And I, you know, Tilly looks so cute in the little, like, New York, the fancy New York flashback that was a lie. She looked adorable. Mm -hmm. Looked great. I loved it. She looked cute in both of them. It was very, um, what is that, Marvelous Miss Maisel? Yeah, just precious and hella pregnant. Yep, little pill hat and flipped out hair. Flipped out, black hair, super cute. Mm Mm-hmm. And of course, I just, I gotta say it again, because this is such an amazing thing that they got through the sensors. It's just, maybe I dipped her too hard, or maybe old blue eyes greased, greased the (laughs) truck. Are you kidding me? It's so good. It took me a minute for that to sink in. I was like, what? (laughs) What did you (laughs) The baby just shot out. (laughs) Whoa. I did, I did mention, because Tilly was drinking in the, the fabulous flashback. And I was like, damn, I wish that we still had that ignorance. <laughs> I know. I was thinking that when I watched Mad Men and anytime there was a pregnant woman, a pregnant housewife, <laughs> she just got to stay home and get hammered and smoke while she was pregnant. And take quaaludes. And take quaaludes. What there were no a, rules. What a dream. <laughs> what an absolute dream that would have been. It is. A you know, shame. And because you didn't have any guilt about it, you were just like, no, this is normal and it's fine. I'm just gonna like get really high and vacuum the same spot for a couple hours. I'm gonna have a martini. As long as I got a roast in the oven. Yeah. Fine. I have some makeup <laughs> on my face. <laughs> it doesn't matter really where it is, but <laughs> that's right. <laughs> One curler left, it's fine. Uh so I do <laughs> wish. I would be willing to have children if I could smoke and drink, but I can't. So it's a no go. (laughs) I've had had those thoughts too. It's like, it's a shame. There's not just one special wine. So I can just relax. I mean, that's all I'm asking. Uh, If you know of something, let us know. (laughs) 
even though Cotton's terrible, this is great. When he, <laughs> when uh, Hank comes up and he was just like, you know, I found out that I was born in New uh, York and Cotton does this whole spiel, blah, 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 blah. And then Hank leaves. And he immediately calls, I'm going to say Topsy. I'm not quite sure. But he was just like, you know that thing that we didn't do? We're going to do that. And then I guess Topsy says something and he's like, oh, no, no, we did that. We did the hell out of that. <laughs> I was like, I want to know what that is. I know. <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> I wonder if they assassinated anyone. I feel like it had to do with just like having sex with a lot of women. What? Yeah. Oh. The way he said it sounded gross. Cummy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Hank has confirmed that he is a New York. He says, Peggy, being born in New York makes me no better than Tony Randall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is- and Peggy says, no, Hank, if being born here is so important, why did you marry me? I didn't marry you right away. Believe me, I had to pray on it. <laughs> Maybe you should have opened your eyes and then your Bible. Red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in his sight. <laughs> and he goes, nothing in there about New York. <laughs> Peggy says, well, Sodom is in there and Gomorrah, and they are New York as all get get out. out. (laughs) (laughs) So good. Just we only get a very slight taste of Bobby in this episode. Oh, yeah. We only get like a hot minute of sampling. Just a little sample where he's so stoked that Hank is from New York. Yes. And he's like, Dad. Is it true what Joseph's dad is saying? <laughs> and Hank sits down to be like, I have to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's true. I was uh, born in New York. And Bobby's just like, get out. He's so excited. <laughs> He's just like, oh, my God. I knew I had a little New York in me. <laughs> I know. I mean, he just turns into like razzle dazzle. <laughs> Broadway boy. Yeah, he's like, did you uh, meet Woody Allen in the village? Yes! <laughs> Which is so good. It's so in good. the village. <laughs> I will say, one of the things that I really picked up on in this episode is that getting old is horrible. Yeah. Uh, one of The first thing is like, uh, Cotton's digging a hole. I can't really understand why, but at some point he's digging a hole. Well, they're pulling up their... Weapons and tools, right? Oh, is that it? I think so. They have like okay. a cache. <laughs> okay, in a in a grave, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And Cotton's like, get get down here and help me uh, dig this up. And the guy's just like, I'm not getting in a hole until I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like you don't think about that until you're close to dying. I I think about that sometimes. Like, what is the mindset of a person? I mean, you could die at any time, but what's the mindset when you know that it is approaching? She's right around the corner. Here she comes. Here she comes. (laughs) She is coming around around the the mountain. mountain. Here she comes. She's ready for you. That's what that song is about. That's exactly what it's It's about. It's about death coming for you. She's coming around the mountain. And we all just slap our knees. (laughs) And we're just like, oh, hey. Here she comes. <laughs> Here she comes. Ready. I wonder about that with that mindset. Of, like to not, I spend so much time thinking like, well, what happens if this doesn't turn out like this or that turns out like that? Right. And you're just like, I know for sure in five years I won't exist. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's like, weird. I'm reaching the end of this. Well, right. And like this whole episode is like, it's not even just him just being like, I'm not getting in no damn grave before I have to until I'm dead. But then we have people with oxygen tanks. Poor uh, Lopez has to take a bus to get to them. Poor guy. Because it's, Hank's truck is not handicap accessible. accessible. Right. There's no, there's no accessibility for him. Uh, the one guy has adult onset diabetes. The other one has an oxygen tank. The doctors want to take his foot. They want to take his foot. So getting old sounds terrible. That's well, what I'm taking away from this episode. <laughs> I will say that I think this might be the Maybe the only time that we see his knee feet with, like, the suture line. No. You absolutely do. But we've seen his knee feet before. We have, but we have. It it was an old, old episode. But we did not see the line where clearly (gasps) that's where the surgery happened. So the scar, the, the scars from the sutures. Jesus. 
And you see it. Oh, you no. are always on those knee feet <laughs> because I can't help it. You I are good see. at it. It's not logical. And I, I always see how they do it. I always forget that those are his knees. They're his knees. I just think of them as legs, but his feet are attached to his knees. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at your knees right now. Imagine if your feet had to be stuck to them. My knees are bad as it is. Yeah. I need that extra 19 to 20 inches of like buffer. I, I would miss my ankles. Dearly. Do you, maybe he got his ankles. They're attached to his knees. Knee ankles. Nankles. Nankles. Kankle? No, no, that doesn't make sense. But anyway. <laughs> okay, here we go. Another good like old man line is when they're like planning the assassination before Hank gets there, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, we can't all fit in your Cadillac. Or when it, one of the topsies or stinkies or fatties, whatever, he's like, we can't all fit in your Cadillac. And he goes, I guess we could take a few people in my Cadillac car. But I don't wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that they all, of course, drive Cadillacs. They all drive Cadillacs and none of them wanna have to do anything no. because they've reached, they're like, I've done too much yeah. in my life. I've reached my limit. I'm not taking my car. <laughs> and this is when uh Hank just like busts in and he's like, It's your fault I was born in New York and I can't drive my truck and I tried a bagel and I actually liked it. No. No more lies. I love that bagel. Yes. It must have been a Thomas. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a Thomas's bagel. <laughs> a Thomas's bagel. Shame on you. Get out of here. Where do you, what do you think they have in Texas? That That's true. That compares to New York bagels. I suppose he didn't go to his local deli. He, there is no local deli. His authentic Jewish deli. There's, there's not a one. Oh. Oh, except for the Hollywood one that. Uh, Bobby almost got gout at, but Hank wouldn't go to that. Maybe he a bought- uh, lenders. Wait, what did you say? A Thomas, <laughs> a, t- a Thomas's or a lenders bagel. Those are good too. <laughs> a Thomas's or a lenders bagel in the refrigerator aisle at his local local <laughs> his local at his local H E B. Yeah, plain plain. He didn't want everything. all that. What's everything? I don't know if I trust I it. only want a bagel. I only want a bagel. <laughs> I don't want everything. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I love. I, I love, could go for a bagel. I could go for a bagel. I'm Are sorry. you kidding me? I just wanted to say that out loud. Go ahead. They're so good. I know. You want a piece of bread Or a bialy. A bialy. Have you ever had a bialy? No. Basically a bagel, but the inside is usually like filled in with like onion or <gasps> garlic. Oh. <gasps> a bialy. Oh, so good. I really do love drunk Hank. His swaying, his like, <laughs> I, when he's in the truck with all of them and he's like, I'd just love to tell Buck Strickland to kiss, kiss. off. I know. Kiss off. Look at you. You're precious. You and got a little bit of your father's love and now you're feeling a little bit more confident. You don't need Buck anymore. Right. And also like you, you know, deep down inside that he's shitty to you. Yeah. And you want to tell him to Piss off. You're finally getting there. Um, I did say good for Hank for sobering up because I would have definitely passed out in the Alamo naked, hogtied, and been arrested the next day. Yeah. I would not have tried to get out of that. I'm like, you know, if I get, I'm done. <laughs> I want to like, forget it. I've taken one of the flags down. <laughs> Ripped it off and used it as a blanket. <laughs> I might have tried to find a phone or something. Well, yeah, got, uh, you would hope. But May- do they have phones at the Alamo? I, <laughs> I doubt it. Do they have a uh, pop question, pop quiz question? Um, mm-hmm. Do they have a basement? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> it's Texas, so no. Uh, correct. Okay, <laughs> I'm basing that on Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh Jesus! <laughs> when he loses his uh, bike, and that psychic is like, "It's in the uh, basement of the Alamo." <laughs> Just random. <laughs> Jesus. And he gets there, and like, we don't have a basement in the Alamo because it's Texas. It's just like Florida. We're yeah. all at sea level. There's no, there's nothing here. All right, I'm gonna not say all of them. Uh, I just said. Take your hands off me, you gutter slut. That's yeah. One of my favorite things ever. That's being hysterical. And when Hank says, 
barbecue at midnight. Well, good luck finding that in Manhattan. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you don't think about. He really has not been to New York. (laughs) You don't think about barbecue, but I'm sure you can get anything you want at midnight. You can get anything you want. (laughs) All right, I'm done. And yet I only buy those hot dogs that you get on the street. Those things, I ate the shit out of those. Those and those chicken kebabs. Ugh. They came out of that dirty water every single one. Tasted you're goddamn right. So good. <laughs> so good. And so your good. crusty, stale ass bun. Mm. God, that's good. A dollar? You got it. Take hey. two. Yeah. Why don't you take two? Give me five dollars worth. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I still have oh. some extra things that you didn't mention. And this might explain our Oklahoma confusion because there's a quote quote by Hank and it says, I'm pretty sure the licensed people are going to need to see a birth certificate. Otherwise, you'd have a bunch of Oklahomans (gasps) trying to get native Texas license plates. There you go. That makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Poor Oklahomans. Yeah. (laughs) Poor Montanans, I guess. I know. Like, is that the same state or what? (laughs) Uh, I mean- Montana is gorgeous, though. I've never been to Oklahoma. Beautiful. I've but never I love, been to Oklahoma. I either. love that Oklahoma's shaped like a pot. It just has that one long, skinny part. Look up a picture of it right now. Okay. I got to look it up. Because never, I, it's, it looks, I am the worst at geography. I'm very bad at it. It's like the only state I noticed on any U.S. map. I'm like, that looks like something. Oklahoma. Let's see, images. Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like a pot. I mean, that long, skinny part. That's nuts. It's, All those people. It's only right above Texas. Yeah. You could have told me that it was like on the moon and I would have believed you. I, you could have said like, it's just under South Dakota. And I would have been like, okay. Because I have no idea where fucking <laughs> yeah. South Dakota is. <laughs> it's just below North Dakota. Who? <laughs> <laughs> is that like Johnny Utah? I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. Wait, are you talking about that movie? <laughs> Point Break, that Point movie break. rules. It's great. <laughs> Love Keanu Reeves. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. I know what you're talking about. We're on the no, same no, 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 no. We're on the same page. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so, this exchange between Hank and Cotton, Hank's like, how come you didn't tell me I was born in New York? And Cotton says, what? No, you wasn't. You was adopted. Worst 50 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> Could have got me a matching pair of Chinese babies for 10. <laughs> What an asshole. Oh my God. And uh and Hank says, I was born in New York City of your seed. And Cotton says, Oh Hank, I always knew the day would come when I'd have to tell you the whole sad story. Maybe it was my fault for loving your mother too much back when she was still worth loving. <laughs> oh my god, he's the worst. <laughs> That's a really good one. Back when she was still worth loving. Still what, worth loving. <laughs> oh, there's another one that he says, like, he's like, well, I, oh, so the pig squealed, but oh. I guess that's what pigs do. Oh, <gasps> shut up. That's one of my I'm sorry. So I'm, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So leave me alone. So cut it out. Cut that out. No, no, no. Nevada. Cut it out. So <laughs> this next part is kind of um, touching on our excellent listener comment song from last episode. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm begging you. I'm on my hands and knees. <laughs> I'm sobbing. But just don't say anything mean. <laughs> Go back to the last episode and listen to the listener comments. I feel song. like maybe we need to just rerun it for this one. All right. I'll listen to it again. I love it that much. It's so fucking good. It's good. So uh, um, when you hear the song and you hear the quote, you'll understand the connection. Uh-huh. Um, but it. <laughs> Uh, it's an exchange between Boomhauer, Bill, Hank, and Dale. And Boom Boomhauer says, yep. And Bill says, yep. And Dale says, yep. Or should I say, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Hank, should I? <laughs> and Hank says, shut up, Dale. And Bill says, boy, you New Yorkers really are rude. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Oh, I know. I know. I heard that and I was like, I knew I remembered it. Yeah. And we should have saved it for this episode. Oh, we're going to play it again. We're going to play it again because it slaps ass. Awesome. Made me laugh so hard. I know. It's incredible. It's fucking incredible. Okay. Um. Then, oh, this little exchange between Hank and Bobby. Hank says, I can't even drive like a Texan anymore, Peggy. I think my truck might be too much vehicle for me. And Bobby says, come on, dad, you'll be okay. 
You just need what mom likes to call closure. <laughs> yes, a great callback to another yes. episode. Yep. Love it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. An exchange between Stinky and Cotton <laughs> uh, when their plan is starting to go to shit. And Stinky says, it's starting to drizzle. And Cotton says, ah, suck it up, Stinky. Rained for 17 days at Guadala- Guadalcanal. I didn't hear you complain then. And Stinky says, I complained a lot. <laughs> I have no memory of that. That was really funny. <laughs> That's awesome. I complained a lot. <laughs> At least Stinky knows. Mm-hmm. He can admit it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Old blue eyes grease the rails. So oh that- my God. <laughs> uh, well, to finish off that quote, so Cotton uh, says, you know, uh, you know, maybe, oh, how your mama loved to dance. Maybe I dipped her too hard or maybe old blue eyes grease the rails. <laughs> Next thing I know, we're trying to keep you from making your debut on Broadway. <laughs> and then Hank says, then Hank says, well, thank you, I guess, for not leaving me there. God, I know. Like, just leave this baby behind. Yeah. And then uh, uh, this one you touched on, this quote you touched on where uh, Hank busts in. He finally knows the true story, busts in on Cotton. And he's like, I was born in the ladies room at Yankee Stadium. And Cotton realizes the jig is up mm-hmm. and he's like, so the pig squealed, huh? Well, that's what pigs do. <laughs> He's so, so mean. so shitty. Because, you know, before he even said that, I thought, in my mind, I thought he's going to say, so the, like, the birds sang. Yeah. That's what, and then it was like, no, he called her a pig. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's <laughs> awful. Because he's the worst. He's the worst. Yeah. Uh, those are pretty much all of my quotes, and I will say we had some guest stars. Ooh, wow, we haven't done this in a while. I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I opened my mouth as wide as I could. I know. I got sucked into it. I'm yeah, gone. Yeah. I'm inside of her now. <laughs> Amy's inside of me, and we have guest stars. So, um, there are three names, two I don't really recognize, one I do. Uh, playing the voice of Tilly was Kay Callen. Mm. Um, oh, Tilly's had so many voices. Yeah. Kay Callen. She's, I feel like this is the one that lasts forever though. Like through the rest of the series. Well, no, she's from, well, I don't know, but I will say she's from Dallas, Texas. Oh. And, uh, she, she's been in tons and tons of stuff. She's been in Veep and uh, oh, wow. that movie Ni- Knives Out. She mm-hmm. was in Lois and Clark, the TV show. Remember that with Terry Hatcher? Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, I don't know that she had like huge roles on any of these, but she's, you know, for sure just been around forever. Um, and then playing the voice of... Erwin Linker is an actor named Jack Carter. And again, I don't recognize Jack Carter, but it seems like he's been around forever and he's just done tons and tons of movies and mm-hmm. TV shows. Uh, even like with little appearances in shows like Parks and Recreation mm-hmm. and iCarly. Oh my God. <laughs> but <laughs> what? he's been like, he looks like he's just been in like an old actor too, like just done tons of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then our last guest star playing the voice of Stinky is Ed Asner. What? Ed Asner. How wonderful is me? that? Of all of the guest stars. I know. Wow. And he only just died this past August. He's beautiful. Look at how absolutely adorable that man is. Oh, he's always been old. He was an elf. <laughs> he's, he has always been old. He, he played the voice of the old man in Up. Yeah. He was, of course... On, uh, he played Lou Grant on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Plays a perfect Santa and a perfect grumpy man. Who else can do that? <laughs> he has range. Range is what we're is what we're saying. Yes. Uh, and so those are all of the guest stars. Wow, very good. Yep. All right. So, listener comments. Same one from last Same week. Same one last. Uh, blah, 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 boop. Same one from last week. That's right, because it makes so much sense with this episode, and I want to hear it again. I know it's. Amazing. I know we have a few others, but this one just goes with this episode. So from Aja, here it is. Yep. Or should I say yada, yada, yada. Listener comments. Listen for the rest.
rest of your days Even if you fall out of a plane Listener comments What the hell do you have going on anyway? Fucking tune in every Tuesday Listener comments Yep or should I say yada yada Please yada? Leave five stars on yep. iTunes. Or should I say I'm begging yada, you? Yada, 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 I'm on my yada, hands and knees. Yada, yada, I'm yada, sorry. Yada, yada, you just can't see me. Yada, 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 listener comments. Listener comments. <laughs> I just love that because we it, definitely we've said all of those things. <laughs> beg <laughs> people, but just don't say it. you can't say anything bad though. We have, 100% <laughs> said all of those things. <laughs> it kills me. Oh, my God. Thank you again, Aja. Oh, thank you. It's so good. You can uh, send your own uh, listener comment songs into hello at hoeyebpod.com, or you can call us at our phone number and just sing it into the voicemail. And what's the phone number? I already said it. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Three, eight, six, five, three, zero. Three, eight, seven, six. Ding. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> Very angry, everyone. Oh, she wants to end this. <laughs> she wants to go home. <laughs> I, no, I want to stay here forever. I just have to wake up early, but I do want to stay. I do want to stay here forever. I have to go into the fucking office. It's a nightmare. All right, but I'm not oh. rushing this. I do want this to last forever. <laughs> rushing it all right here we go listener comments all right listener comments and by the way if you ever want to submit one follow us on instagram that's where we post it and it's on our stories and you should probably just put like a notification on because it's very random you can do that oh yeah you can that would be smart that would be very smart so nerdy toes 79 you know how i feel about hairy fruit i know (laughs) what is that a kiwi (laughs) Also, yeah, I agree with you, Cotton. Get your hairy ball fruit out of my salad. I've never had a kiwi. I just that, don't know about that's, it. I don't believe you. Why would I? When would there you just lived kiwis everywhere? Because you lived in Florida. Kiwis? Yes. In Florida? All you can eat. I mean, key limes. But kiwis, is that like such a Florida thing? Absolutely. I bet a million other places claim kiwis. I am claiming Florida for Kiwis. I am shocked. Well, I'm not even from Florida. I'm a native New Jersey. Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You're from Florida. Come on. I didn't move there till I was 12. Uh. <laughs> oh, well, that, oh, that, that's a good amount. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. You didn't yeah. know that? No. Oh. I actually meant to ask you that. <laughs> oh. Like, so where were you born and where were you raised? It's not amazing. Always finding out new things about each other. All the time. Every day. Life is a blessing. Every day. All right. Uh, disgruntled Toaster says, my wife now calls my beard a chin belt after watching this episode with me. Well, that is a <laughs> reference to Cotton saying that he has to go kill Castro and bring back his chin pelt. Oh. <laughs> oh, I have something about Castro that I want to mention. But anyway, we'll, we'll keep going. Okay. 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 I can't wait to find out. <laughs> it's going to be bad. But okay. Anyway. Xanadu Vibes says, I like how he found pride in being a New Yorker while being framed in a crime by his dad. <laughs> Parent goals. I, oh, Delaria says, nice knee foot shot when Cotton is in his robe. Oh. Thank you. We see it. We see the suture line. Like, we see it. Good eye, Delarius. Wow, good eye. And Delirious also says, I identify as a hairy fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping someone would say that. Thank you, Delirious. Yes. A lot of people love the hairy fruit line. We've actually got a couple. So uh, Machine Mentality also said that. Maybe that's the only other one. <laughs> we'll, we'll come across them. We'll come across them. And I even saw a couple... Yep, or should I say yada yada yadas? Mm-hmm. Um, Shaka Yo, and I saw one at the top that was Kate, uh, Callista in Bloom, mm. and I saw at least one more which was 
also <laughs> Shaka Yo. So I saw two. Mm-hmm. All right. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Mm-hmm. Very Great. Good. Okay. So we've got Tiffany Does Your Hair. We've got Poison Envy Seven. Bread Chef underscore Thunder Muffin, Arbitrary and Delicious, Marissa Madness. And they all say, why am I wearing the hat? Yeah, (laughs) that was such a funny line. By Scalabrine of Thrifting, when they show Hank's partial social security number in another episode, it's the right digits for someone born in New York. How about that? Wow. God, because they're brilliant. And... (laughs) Excellent, knowing that. Also, yeah, you too. Very smart. But yeah, that's incredible. And my last one by Tiffany Does Your Hair. I don't normally hitchhike. <laughs> I love that one. He just, he's in a taxi and he just takes off. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, I normally don't hitchhike. And the guy's like, this is a wait, taxi. Wait a second, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, trivia? Let's do it. Yay! Yay! All right, you go first. Better not ask me any questions about license plates. All right, Jackie, I have multiple trivias and almost all of them revolve around Hank's birth certificate. Okay. So let's start with number one. What is Tilly's middle name? I feel like you also have all of these. Ah, You have all of these, don't you? I do remember that off the top of my head. Okay. What time was Hank born? 307? 307? What? 307 what? Hey, yeah. Okay, fine. Because it's, the, <laughs> because it's the whole thing of like, oh, but he was born at Yankee Stadium, so is this accurate? But maybe they only checked into the hospital at yeah. that time? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Anyway, who weighed more at birth, Peggy or Hank? Hank? Peggy. Ah! Hank was uh, seven pounds, five ounces, and Peggy is seven pounds, six ounces. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. She's like, I was seven pounds, six ounces. As Perfect. she mentions. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> How long was Hank when he mm. was born? I'm going to try not to look at my answer so I can remember. Oh, you have, you have all of these too? So 19.2? <laughs> that is so close. 19 and a half. 19 and a half. So 19.5. <laughs> I do have a license plate one, so I'm not going to go with that one no, because you- I know I'm going to get it. <laughs> go ahead and say it. All right. No, we're going to do that. Okay. What is the website Dale uses to access Hank's birth certificate? HankHill.com. Damn it. God damn it. I thought that I was going to get you on that one. No way. Back. Everyone on Reddit was talking about it. Oh, ew. Uh, you go on Reddit? Yeah, they All always right. tell me interesting things about each episode. Just don't look <sighs> at the other stuff. Nerd alerts. All right. <laughs> it was hangkill.com. It was hangkill.com. Please and thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, that was it. I thought, I thought, wow, I think you got pretty much every single fucking one. And I knew she would. I was like, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to put everything on there. Uh, oh. I have one more. Oh, okay. What is Cotton's middle name? Oh, it's an L one. I was going to say Lester, but I see here that it's Lindall. Oh, God. Lindall, oh, I see here. <laughs> I used, like, cheater. It's just the screenshot of his birth certificate. <laughs> it's all right there. I didn't even have to write it down. <laughs> Very smart. That's smart. All right, well, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, so right. you killed it. You're, you've already won. Well... <laughs> I'm glad you went first then. I know. Um, so my question is, I'm going to have to make one up because those were all of my questions. <laughs> I can see you. I can see your eyes trying to figure something out. Uh, okay. What fancy restaurant did Cotton take, did Cotton lie about taking Tilly to? The Rainbow room yes because you mentioned it that's the only reason why i would know that (laughs) well i just tried to pull that out of my butt but (laughs) great job i know what's in that butt i know it's in that butt i know what's in there (laughs) and do you know the next episode (laughs) sure don't okay god here we go um poke close elevator oh hank in the great glass elevator yes Yay! Which the title's based on that rolled doll book, right? 
I have no idea. Because it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and then I think Charlie oh. and the Great Glass Elevator. There you go. Which is yeah. the only one of those books I read. I think it goes to space. So I'm going to throw some little facts in here. So Yankee Hanky was also like a hanky that like the Cleveland Indians had back in the day. And it said like, they fuck called it Yankee, a Yankee hanky. Fuck Yankees hanky. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, was surprised by that. So we've um, got Yankee Hanky. We've got Hanky Panky. Are there any other Hanky rhyming episodes that we know of? Hanky Doodle Dandy. That's no, but not that one. doesn't rhyme. <laughs> that's not one. <laughs> so no. <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted to say that Fidel Castro did play bas- baseball. I believe it. They love uh, baseball in Cuba. He loved playing baseball. Yeah, they love it. And it was only amateur. It was never like professional. Wow. But he was actually, I thought you were just saying like, he loved playing it like for a hobby. No, he, he did it in like college. Hold oh on. my God. Hold on. I looked it up. It doesn't, whatever. It doesn't matter. But yes, he did really like baseball. What was his team? I don't, who fuck, I don't know. What position did he play? Who knows? Okay. Shortstop. Cause that's the only one that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Center. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bitcher. <laughs> I don't know. Go but, on. uh, <laughs> so he did play baseball and he loved baseball, which I think it's just, it just really speaks to their knowledge. <coughs> I mean, Foods. Fidel Castro would be at a baseball game if he was in New York City. <gasps> oh, I didn't even put that together. Of right? course. Of course he would be there. Of course. Because oh, so he likes smart. baseball. So smart. Oh, that's wonderful. And Yankee Hanky. With the with the nap the the hankies. Can you imagine all the things we're missing? Everything. It must so be much. so much stuff. They must be like, if they if they would ever listen, they'd be like, "You idiots, people! <laughs> oh God, <laughs> we're sorry." <laughs> well, um, but I am excited for the next episode because mm-hmm. we're getting a little Anna Richards action. Action. <laughs> action. Hell yeah. Uh, and a little tushy action. A lot of bill. A how do you, little tushy How action. do you feel about a lot of bill, though? We get a little taste of happy bill, which I always mm, love. I know, I know. I love a happy confident. bill. I love a confident bill. Mm-hmm. I want, I want, I wish there were more episodes that focused on him as a barber because he is. He knows what. Exactly pure magic. What he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He, he, he has no self-doubt. Mm-mm. He knows. Mm-hmm. And it's, it makes makes you feel good it does just just goes to show fake it till you make it exactly all right everybody listen we'll talk to you soon okay yeah we gotta go five star review we're begging you just don't say anything <laughs> bad we're on our knees on our hands and knees on apple <laughs> apple podcast <On> apple podcasts. <laughs> harry what do you have to say about it <laughs> okay <laughs> and until next time Via Via con Dios. Dios.